Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure of announcing to you that we are going to make an effort to repeat the old rebel yell. One, two, three! <laughs> The rebel yell dug up from the vault of the Smithsonian Institute, the only recording of the famous Confederate war cry from the American Civil War. There's been a lot of yelling and complaining recently about the Confederate cause in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, of all places. Why? It's a restaurant known as Hillbilly Heaven. It's about Southern barbecue, but they're running with the old stars and bars, the Confederate battle flag displayed front and center, outside, with a similar decor inside. Now opening its second location in Steeltown. A lot of people are offended or say they are, outraged or say they are, by this display of the symbolism of the Old South. Know what? Some people need to lighten up. The offense barometer is at an all-time low. We need some Canadian common sense. Let me put the cards on the table as I always do. I personally am not impressed by the Confederate flag draped all over Hillbilly Heaven. It turns me off. I've spent a lot of time down south. I know what that flag means to many people who feel it's a symbol of oppression. So I personally would not eat there. That's my personal judgment. The owner, Cameron Bailey, his response is to declare, is it against the law? No, it's not. Then nobody should be complaining. That's his perspective. He's the owner. Now, if people who drape themselves in the old stars and bars are blind to why people don't like it, well, they just don't know history. They're ignorant. Bailey's not necessarily ignorant. He's taking a stand against political correctness. He's aware of the connotations. He's willing to risk his livelihood. Facts are facts, and the fact is, right or wrong, when many people look at the Confederate flag, this is what they see. James, your name is Toby. I want to hear you say it. What's your name? Kunta. Kunta Kinte. It's a nice name. It's Toby. And it's going to be yours till the day you die. It's a powerful scene from Roots, the miniseries. But Cameron Bailey, the owner of the restaurant, insists that's not what this is about for him. He says the flag draped over his restaurant represents working class values and the fight to protect a way of life. Kind of like this. Just a good old boy, never meaning no harm. Beats all you never saw, been in trouble with the law since the day they was born. Just a good old boy, they wouldn't change if they could. Fighting the system like a two modern day Robin Hood. Just a good old boy is never meaning no harm, and I don't believe that Bailey wants to glorify slavery, and neither should anybody else. Here's Bailey himself, the owner of the restaurant, explaining his choices. We were looking for a, a southern icon, and what's more iconic than the Confederate flag? I mean, think Duke's a hazard, General Lee. I mean, everybody knows what it is, and they know it's southern. The connotation is debatable. It is a southern icon, there's no question about that. You know what? Regardless of whether you're offended or not, it's irrelevant. There's no law that protects people from being offended in this country. There really isn't. I know, I know, I'm bracing myself for yet another complaint to the, the Human Rights uh, Commission on this, if they want to make this into something. The last thing I want to do is come across like some racist redneck who doesn't understand why the Confederate flag is a symbol of oppression for so many people. I do understand. I do get it. And as I said earlier, I don't honor it. It bothers me and I wouldn't eat there. But it's a matter of intense stateside debate over the symbolic use in public places in many parts of the southern United States. Unfortunately, it's become a symbol stolen by the Ku Klux Klan and a lot of other hate groups. 
Does that mean the old Confederate veterans giving the rebel yell are all a bunch of bigots? No, there were a lot of causes of the Civil War. We focus on one very important one. Abe Lincoln focused on that very important one. Officially made it about the emancipation of slavery at the Gettysburg Address at the end of the war. He started in on racism and slavery being the central reason for going to war. He started in on that about halfway through the war. And thankfully so. It's a major achievement of the human race. But does all of this make Bowen Luke and Duke driving around like maniacs in the General Lee, uh, are they as offensive as Klansmen at a cross burning? Of course not. So before screaming for the ban wagon, I implore people to look at some common sense here. How would I feel about uh, a restaurant uh, getting away with Nazi imagery? Well, obviously I'd be outraged, just like I am about restaurants that do exist today with so-called communist chic. They exist in our own country. Yeah. Two trendy Toronto bars come to mind. Both Castro's Lounge and Pravda demonstrate the utter hypocrisy in this story. What does Pravda do? They invite people to immerse themselves into a political process that killed millions of people. Communism. And they're glorifying communism from their website to the gaudy communist decor to the propaganda posters on the wall. But apparently Toronto's champagne socialists don't seem to feel any conflict and don't seem to feel a conflict with any righteous indignation that might inhibit them from slurping back the finest vodkas being offered. So why is communist chic okay, but not confederate chic? Hillbilly Heaven's owner Cameron Bailey makes a good point about today's priorities. If people really want to protest a flag, go to most of the Chinese restaurants where they hang up a Chinese flag and talk about oppression and civil rights in today's world, not 150 years ago. Go talk to those people how their countrymen treat each other. Quite simply, there's a reasonable limit for people's priorities to take action on their outrage. And once again, I smell that inevitable complaint to the human rights folks. As much as I can smell those savory ribs at Hillbilly Heaven. The outrage hurdle has dropped so low in this country, it's tripping everybody up. Everybody's outraged about everything. As with all cases like this, people should protest with their pocketbooks. That's what people should be doing in a free country. If you choose not to go there, if you make the kind of choice I would make, fine. No problem. If Hillbilly Heaven is truly outrageous, it'll soon be sent to an afterlife through a natural death in the marketplace. And that's Canadian common sense.